Hey guys, <clears throat> Kyle R1945 from the Saddle Hunter Forum. Um, haven't done a video in a while. I wanted to go over kind of how I've set up my JX3 hybrid and how I've been using it this year. Um, so I posted a, a thread there on the forum and it gives some pictures of some of the modifications I made. And one of the questions that uh, inevitably keeps coming up is how to store stuff, how to take a pack, this and that. Um, so I wanted to give an update from where I had started. I had done a video uh, maybe last season or the year before on just going without any sort of pack at all. Uh, all I had was a little small binocular pouch and I've gotten away from that <clears throat> because I didn't like how it stuck out on the side of it. I could kind of stuff it in, but it was kind of floppy and kind of done away with that. So uh, I'm gonna throw the hybrid on and show you real quick how I used it. I just hunted yesterday evening, uh, had a big old nanny doe come in stare at me for about 30 minutes and finally give me a shot and I hit a limb and, and deflected the arrow and missed her. But I uh, wanted to show you guys how I have it set up, so I'll throw it on now and kind of give you an idea. Um, actually, first I'll start here. So I climbed with uh, bolts and an aider. Uh, Fling and Arrows did a video on that uh, a couple years ago. Really cool method and I've been using that where I can use bolts. Um, so aider, eight bolts. This is an Allen cartridge belt. Um, I've got it cut down to where it's just 10 and then I have this extra piece of webbing I can fold over with a tri-glide and clip to my uh, chest harness if I want. But honestly I just skip one hole, fold it over, it goes in my pocket along with the drill, goes in my uh, hip pocket whenever I'm climbing and then I've got a cargo pocket, I'm sorry while I'm walking, and then whenever I've got a cargo pocket while I'm climbing that I shove both in as I go and just pull out what I need. So the aider and bolts go in one cargo pocket. And then I have my uh, safeguard, extra carabiner, and cord for uh, auto block. That goes in that pocket as well. And then I've got my gear strap and bow hook. Those also go in a pocket because I don't want to be digging for those uh, out of my pack whenever I knit. Whenever I leave the woods, I throw all this stuff into the pack before I put it back on my back, so I don't have to deal with it in my pockets um, on the walk out, and then I just you know readjust whenever I get home. But all of that stuff fits in my pockets easily, nothing to it. <clears throat> all right, let's see, I may have to adjust you here. So get on camera, yep, there we go. So, uh, Oh, I got the waist belt clipped. Of course I would do that. There we go. All right. Uh, so I've gotten away completely from the, uh, some of the stock stuff on the hybrid, but you can modify this stuff. You can add new things. You can use what's there. There's a lot of different ways to accomplish all of this. Um, go ahead and get this off and out of the way. This is my uh, Garmin <clears throat> um, InReach Mini. Got a problem, hit that SOS button, they send help. Uh, I keep it clipped there. Ball compass is clipped on there as well. Um, all right. So I added a different shoulder harness. Uh, it's an EXO, uh, I believe it's the K2, it might be K3 their shoulder harness for their packs. It's by far the most comfortable harness that I've found. You'll see it in the thread how I modified it. I added load lifters, that's all there. And I actually bought belt from Eastern Wood Outdoors from Dana, um, from doublesteps.com. It's his lineman's belt. Um, I had a double adjust plastic Cobra buckle that I've been using on this. That's what I use here as well. Lineman's belt stays on my lineman's loop, so I don't need a bag for that. It's right here. It's never bothered me, never caught on anything. It's no different than a dump pouch. It hangs right there. I guess if it bothered me, I could shove it back in the hybrid or put it in my pocket, but that's there. And then on this side, I use a night eyes gear tie for my four squirrel steps. I wrap, just wrap the strap around them really, really tight. There's a hole through the bottom of them. I just run the gear tie through that. It goes on that lineman's belt. Good to go. You'll see a cord hanging over my shoulder. I'll explain what that is in a minute. And then the bridge loops, what do you do with them? Do you tie them behind you? The Guido's web, they used to Velcro. You'll see a little modification I did. I added a strap, but I actually walk with them. Um, 
So I take that strap, come across my chest, and it's just a, a G hook on it. And I go from this bridge loop, clip to that bridge loop, and, and it pulls it tight here. There's another reason I do that. I've removed the leg straps from holding the back up now. So I haven't added them to this belt yet. So I'll add them and they'll clip on just like they did on the old hybrid. It'll be no different, but I'm not gonna use them for holding the back up. So um, I've got my bridge carabiner. I clip right there. So that's in front of me, nothing flops, nothing's moving going on with the, the bridge loops. That adjustment though with that G hook allows me to pull it tight. That pulls the back forward and cinches it tight. At the top, I'll show you how I have the buckles there to hold it in. And then I've also got this cord. And this cord is attached to the fork. And then it's got a prusik with a little metal hook on it. And you can hook that on your sternum strap. You can hook it anywhere on your shoulder. Anywhere you can just hook this hook, pull the prusik tight, and that pulls the fork over the top. So whenever I reach back and unclip the back, it's free there. Then it's tied here and it's tied with this cord. So as I climb, um, you know, it's not flopping around. I actually got it hooked to the wrong bridge loop. So my bridge is hooked together, but it's not, these aren't flopping. I can clip into my tether and then loosen this takes that G hook off. So now this is loose and floppy. It's ready to go. I can take this, pull on that cord. Uh, it's hanging up on some, oh, there it goes. Lay it over. And that falls down, good to go. Now I can sit into it. Now, I've got my arena steps. That's what it's hitting on right now, obviously, because I would have that on the tree. So we're gonna pull that off, um, get it off of there. So now I'm in the tree, I'm ready to go. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take this off now and get it in front of you. I'll come back and show you how I've got it set up from there. All right, so now I'm back. So now you can see I've got the seat folded out. It would have been under me. I've got my Doyle's uh, hoist. It's a, connected to the strap that goes underneath the seat. Um, you can, so it slides, uh, it's right there at my side all the time so I can hook my bow to it. It never, never has to touch the ground. So when I get to the tree, I just walk up and start climbing. So on this load lifter, which is my right load lifter, you'll see I've got my rappel rope. It's just on the load lifter, it's just hanging on it. I don't have it attached in, in a bag. I don't have any other stuff to carry. It's just hanging on here. You could do this without the load lifter and just hang it on that ear. You could add just a little gear tie. You could do anything to hang it there. I don't really understand the need for the bag for a rope. If you wrap it up, it's not gonna go anywhere. This stuff is abrasion resistance and slippery. Nothing grabs it, it doesn't make noise. It stays inside the frame. But this is what I do to keep it on here. So whenever I have this folded up, You'll see on the ground chair loops, I've added split buckles to attach up here to the top. So where the leg loops used to go up and hook in, you've got a female buckle. I just take a split, split loop buckle, hook it on here. These go up and clip to the back. So that's what holds it up. So that's not tight if you have nothing in there. So like an early season hunt, you don't have a bunch of clothes. That's where I use that G hook on the bridge straps to pull across, as well as the, uh, the Prusik over the top. And then I've also got a bungee that, um, that's what I was fighting earlier, I forgot I had it on there. Um, I've got a bungee that can go around the back and clip across the frame if you want it for a little extra security. So I use that like if I'm riding my bike or whatever, that goes across there. <clears throat> but you don't need the leg loops to go up anymore. All right, <clears throat> so, Repel ropes there. My, uh, my load lifter hooks are G hooks and they're real easy to take off on the tree. So you can see that mod and the, uh, the thread in there in the forum as well. So when I'm in, whenever I get to the tree, I unhook those. So now I climb up the tree. Um, 
and I've got my bag on here that I'm using right now. This is just a Kefaru. It's just a, like an accessory bag that fits this perfectly. You could use any bag that's roughly 8 to 12 inches wide and say 12 to 16 inches long will fit here. It will work fine. Um, but what I did is I threaded some additional uh, threading, webbing, to give me more buckles. So I've got a buckle on each corner of this bag. Uh, I can reach over my shoulder and unclip these. So before I climb, down at the bottom, and I'll show this, I've, I've got this in that thread as well, there's a, there's a buckle at the bottom. I actually use that to keep the bag secure, but also my tether is daisy chain. So it's the end of my rappel rope that I use as my tether. I just clip it on that buckle. So whenever I get to the tree, now I've got my tether, daisy chain, ready to go. <clears throat> so those two buckles come undone at the base of the tree. So you see this can flop this way. If I want to climb, if I'm like a, like if I'm doing one stick climbing or something crazy where I'm going to move a lot, I could keep those buckled. Um, and they're easy to buckle while I'm in the hybrid. I'm just reaching either here or here to unbuckle. So get up to height, hook up my tether, sit down in the hybrid, I'm all good to go. I just reach over my shoulder and unclip one of these. Now the bag swings free. Reach over this shoulder and grab the bag and unclip that side. <clears throat> now everything's off the back of the hybrid. I hang this bag from my gear strap and I'm good to go. So whenever I get done hunting and I'm ready to get down, I just take my repel rope off of this load lifter, untie my knot, drop it down to the ground, repel, and then whenever I'm done repelling, instead of trying to coil all that rope up in a bag or stuff it in something or anything like that, I just wrap it up seven or eight times, tie a knot around it, slip it on the load lifter, clip this on, and I'm good to go. My bag's already in here. I can clip that one lower part if I'm worried about it, or <clears throat> I can keep this separate whenever I get to the base of the tree, take all this stuff and put it in it, and then reach over my shoulder, clip it in, and then fold the back up and go. I got options on the ways that I do it. Nine times out of ten though, everything with the exception of the rappel rope goes into the bag at the end of the hunt, uh, and I just put the rappel rope here. It hasn't given me a problem yet. It hasn't caught on anything in a tree on a hunt. It hasn't caught on anything on a walk during the hunt. It hasn't bothered me at all. So my lineman's belt is not in a pouch. My rappel rope's not in a pouch. My ring of steps are not in a pouch. Nothing's in a pouch. I have a single bag that I use here. So, all right, I'm gonna come back and I'll show you everything I have in the bag. All right, so now I'm back with the bag and as you can see, it is very empty. There's a ton of room in here. So this bag, I'm going to call it 10 inches wide, 14 inches long, and say about three, maybe four inches deep. It's floppy. It has no structure. It's just, uh, you know, Cordura fabric. Uh, it's an old legacy Kafaru bag. I bought it cheap on Rock Slide because it, it doesn't, you know, it's not the cool new stuff. So people get rid of this stuff. And the bag's bulletproof and it's awesome and it works perfect for this. It's a little noisy, but it doesn't move. Like once I put it in the tree, I'm not really digging in my pack a whole lot. So I've got a thermosel, uh, some trail markers. I typically, you know, if I find a good spot, I like to leave one maybe on my tree or a uh, walk out or blood trailing or whatever. So I keep a couple of those with me. I never leave them in the woods whenever I'm not there though. Bottle of water. Uh, and typically what I've been doing is carrying uh, one of the filter bottles. So it's got the carbon filter in it, but it's also a water bottle. So you just open the bottle, put it in the stream, close or pond, whatever, close it and drink through the straw and it filters it. So I can fill up a bottle of water if I only need one while I'm out there, I have it. But if I'm in a jam or tracking a deer or something, you know, something happens, I've got that filter. Uh, this spot, I was close to the truck, so I just used that. Um, all right, I'll go through that bag in a second. Wind checker, saw, Knife, grunt, extra headlamp. So my headlamp's still on my truck right now. I'm not going out there to get that. Extra wind checker, uh, bandage tape, Benadryl, stuff like that. And a zip tie for attaching tags. All right, and then I've got this little ditty bag, which is a Ziploc bag because I've, got, I've just gotten over having bags for everything. You don't have to have 
a dedicated thing. Some people like it. I, I just, I don't go in my bag. Like my grunt tube goes on my neck whenever I get in the tree. Wind checker goes in my pocket. Then I don't touch anything else in my bag. But this is the bag that goes with me no matter where I go. Uh, phone charger, extra thermal cell pads, toilet paper, pen for marking tags, tags, extra bag if I need, extra Ziploc if it starts to rain, I can put my phone in it. A um, couple extra batteries for charging the phone or spare headlamps. So my headlamp, spare headlamp, and my phone charger all use the same batteries. So never have to worry about that. And then extra knife, uh, knife lids. So all that goes in this bag with ample room to spare. In fact, it's got enough room for everything there. Then all the stuff I mentioned at the beginning of the video for my pockets all goes in there. My ring of steps fits in there and that rappel rope fits in there. So if I get to the end of a hunt, let's say it's winter clothing and I'm going to have to undress to walk back out again, rather than uh, put this on at the, the top of the tree and knowing I'm going to have to take the hybrid off anyway to get undressed to walk out, I'll take this and shove everything in here. So all the stuff I just took out, everything that came out of my pockets, my ring of steps, GPS, rappel rope, everything will fit in here. Strap it on the back. Now I have nothing in my pockets. I ain't got to worry about anything. I know people don't like that. It doesn't bother me while I'm walking out scouting. And a lot of times I walk out with it back in my pockets, but it's just as easy while I'm in the tree to just throw everything in here at the base of the tree, throw everything in here and pack out. So the bag is way bigger than I need. To be honest, I could get away with, you know, half the size of this. I'm going to guess it's something like a thousand cubic inches, maybe, um, or, you know, a, a thousand liter, I don't know how they judge the bag. Like the pop-up 28 is a 2,800, uh, I thought it was a 2.8 liter, maybe it's 2,800 cubic inches, I don't really remember. This is about a third of the size of that. So almost similar in size and, and length, but a little narrower, a little shorter, and nowhere near as deep. So this little bag will hold everything you need. Uh, the Predator pack that uh, Tethered sells, there's a similar pack like that on Amazon. It, I think it's called a hydration bladder holder or pack, pouch or pack. One of those will work really good too. You just need to be able to sew a buckle in each corner like this, uh, or sew a loop to put a no-sew buckle on. It's a lot of them already have loops. A lot of them have molly. You got a lot of different options. This one actually has straps for strapping it to another pack is how it works but I just put the lower buckles on those. So it fits in there nice and easy, nothing to it. Uh, I think that was it. I just wanted to give you guys a quick rundown, but I can easily sit in there. And again, you just need to be able to reach the back of the hybrid is right here. I just reach over my shoulder and clip that. If you're unflexible or you're bundled up in winter clothes, you can move that connection point up to the top of the thing to where you could even reach with this hand and get there easy to do. You could go lower. You've got all these attachment points on the back of the hybrid. That's the whole benefit of it is it's modular. And then the final note I'll leave you with is John's going to be coming out with accessories for all this stuff. Um, I'm not sure on a timeline. I'm thinking probably next season. I doubt he's going to have anything this year, but maybe. Um, so the company that's building the hybrid for now, they're prototyping all that stuff. So you should see quite a few different accessories for the people who like to have bags and pouches for everything. It's gonna have some really cool stuff. So I wouldn't go blow a bunch of money to try to figure this out right now, but if you wanna do it yourself, you can find any small pouch and if you can sew or have someone sew or it's got loops on it, you just need no sew buckles in the four corners and you can clip it on there nice and easy. If you got any questions, hit me up on the forum. Thanks guys.